One of the most painful modes in Super Mario Maker 2 is the online versus mode. Recently, I finally got that S plus rank, rewarding me with the final versus costume, the superb suit. While it may not be the best versus player in the world, I like to think I'm at least good enough to give some of you all struggling to move up in the ranks some tips on how to improve. Keep in mind these tips won't work for every level or scenario, but implementing them may help you get that superb suit, and of course, the S plus rank. So without further ado, let's jump right into some of my tips and tricks on how to get better at the versus mode in Super Mario Maker 2. First we are going to start off fairly generally, then move on to more specific tips as we go on. By far the most important tip I can give is try to cheese the levels. Cheese is basically where you beat a level in a way that wasn't intended by the creator. You're going to want to do this in verses because this will often be faster than the normal route. Here are some common examples of cheese. Keep in mind these won't work for every level, however since many versus levels are pretty poorly designed, there's usually some form of cheese in them, and this list isn't nearly all of the cheese that you can do. But first let's go through the list I've compiled. Jumping off a player's head to get over a wall. Obviously this wouldn't be intended as if there's a door or other room, you may be able to skip it entirely. You're using the water at the bottom of jungles to swim to the finish. This would work I'd say about half of the time. This is really only effective though if there is a sub area or rooms that you are supposed to go into. This one doesn't work sometimes if either the ground is placed up too high at the goal, or since swimming is slower, the other players may just be able to run to the end faster than swimming. Mario 3D World probably has some of the most cheese opportunities with its power-ups. Using the cat suit, you can make bigger jumps and climb over obstacles. With the hammer suit, you can make boxes to scale high walls or even go over lava. These will likely be the most common cheese you find. Finally is going over clear pipes. Like the jungle theme, cheese like this can be pretty risky as the clear pipes may go up and you can't go over it. However, going over clear pipes is usually much faster than going through them, so it's certainly a risk worth taking, but it may be the difference between winning or losing, so make sure to be careful when doing this. There are many other ways to cheese levels, and each level is different. These are just a few of the most common examples. Make sure to look for and think of ways to do each level you play faster, even if it means cheesing it. Now one of the most iconic parts of Mario Maker 2 Versus are the keep and clear condition fights, which you can steal from players by jumping on their heads and a few other things like claw swiping. So how are some ways you can win them? Well for one, if you have the key, you should pretty much always jump over the top of the key door, then ground pound down into the door. This pretty much ensures that nobody else will jump on your head, and that you'll get in the door first, since ground pounding pushes at people out of the way. This can always be done in Mario U and 3D World, but you can also ground pound with a Link Power Up, Dry Bone Shell, and Goomba Shoe in the other themes. If you don't have the key as well, there may even be a slight chance you get it on the way down. Speaking of which, what is the best way to obtain the keys and clear conditions for yourself if someone has it? Well, one of the best things that I've found is to stand outside of another pipe or door that they will be going through. They usually have to wait some time before they can actually do anything after leaving a door or a pipe, so this is by far the best spot and time to jump on their head to steal. Alternatively, you could stand in front of the door or goal that they have to reach with the key, as they would obviously need to go through you in order to complete the level. So while timing may be difficult, you could still probably steal it. Next up is another pretty important one, but very specific. However, if you are grinding for S+, I guarantee you'll find at least one of these levels like this. Looking at the setup, it seems like one player is going to have to hit the switch, and the other players will win. However, that is actually not what happens 99% of the time. In levels like these, you are always going to want to be the person who hits the switch, as these levels are purposefully designed to trick people. As we see here, it's actually the person who hit the switch that wins. This also goes for P-switches as well. Every single level like this I've seen ends with the person who hit the switch winning, so make sure to be the one that hits it. Next up I want to talk about movement and how to move a little bit faster. This tip can help you if you just want to get the world record on a single player level as well. Believe it or not, sliding down slopes isn't actually always faster than running down them. Here's an image by Relaxmas on Twitter on if slopes are slower or faster running or sliding down in each game style. Each game style is a bit different, so you may want to try memorizing this chart, as it may or well help you keep your lead or catch up in a game of verses. Some of these, however, are a bit outdated. SMB3 actually does have the same slope mechanics as Mario World and you, and since it's faster to always jump in 3D World, you should always slide down these slopes. 
These tips will be very helpful for optimizing versus movement and can also be pretty helpful for getting world records or even improving ninja speedrun times. Next up are a few power-up tips. First off, the star makes you run significantly faster, so if you see one, unless it takes a long time to get, you should always pick it up. This next one is a personal preference, but for me, in levels that either have a flagpole, have a boss fight, or have a boss clear condition, I almost always stop to get a power-up. While this may cause me to fall behind initially, it will help in staying alive throughout the whole level, where everyone else may die. If they do survive though, you can usually touch the flag, which makes you lose significantly less points than if you were to just lose normally without touching the flag. This is really a case-by-case -case basis, so you'll have to make your own judgement on this one. Also never, and I mean never, use the Koopa car, unless it's the clear condition, as the startup time is so slow, it's usually not worth stopping to get. If you are ahead by a lot, then you should slow down to pick up power-ups, which will stop you from dying and losing your lead. Don't stop if the players are right behind you, however. The Catsuit's Dive is really good for moving fast and slowing other players down, as if you hit them, it'll actually stun them as if they were hit by a ground pound. For my final power-up tip, make sure to not collect any unneeded power-ups like this one here, as it'll actually freeze you in place, possibly causing you to lose the win. Next up is sabotaging the players behind you. Now, if you want to win, you obviously don't want them to have a chance to catch up. The best ways I've found to block other people's paths are destroying blocks that are required to go over by using a power-up, bomb, etc. Or destroying blocks or items that are needed to progress. You can also block doors and pipes with items like P-switches or POWs, as the other players won't be able to go through them if they're in the way. Just remember that these items may eventually despawn, but it will still help you get the lead either way. Next one isn't really part of the game itself, but for me it was super important. Make sure to not get too upset at this game. Yes, there's so much random stuff that can go wrong, and while it is infuriating as heck, it's best to stay positive or take a break, as a negative mindset only really makes me personally play worse. So if you are getting too heated, then I'd say take a break, and do something else and come back later. For our final tip, we have one that makes the community improve. If you have already basically won the game, and the level has a flagpole, then wait for the other players. As we said earlier, touching the flag will make you lose less points, and you need all the points you can get in verses. This only happens though in levels with flags, so levels in the castle unless it's 3D World, or if it's in Mario 3 or Mario World, then don't wait, as you're the only one that can be able to get points from this. Also, you don't have to wait for the other players if another player is right on your tail, if there's a lot of danger in the area, or if there's a door or pipe on the flag. This is because these things could easily lead to you losing, so it's better you just take the win and hope the others catch up. While this may not particularly help you, it'll make the other players like you more, and possibly lead to them waiting for you at the flag on later levels, so you don't lose as much. If you want to get even more familiar with the Versus community, I suggest joining the Versus Discord to talk about some more potential strategies. I'll have a link to it in the description. Also, you know, while you're at it, you can join my Discord, which is also linked in the description. Obviously, the people there won't give you free wins, but these can help you have more fun with verses and be a part of a community. But anyways, that's it for this video. Let me know if any of these tips will help you in the future in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like, or maybe even subscribe, as that helped me out a huge bunch. Links to my Twitter and Discord, along with Relaxmas' Twitter and the Versus Discord, are all linked in the description. I hope you all have a great new year, and I hope this channel will as well. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.